Okay, so one, two, three. Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. I welcome you back to the channel and today in a bit of a different scenario. Do not worry, this is not a permanent change. The red background will return next week, but for today, I don't have my PC, so I had to improvise a little bit. And in order to follow the chapter, since my phone is already busy with the recording, I figured let us not push it. So I came to my father's PC. So we'll hope that the, the internet is strong enough to run this one here. And I'm sorry if you're hearing some chirping in the background. My bloody bird has decided that this was a proper time to start singing. But guess who else is going to be singing when this chapter is over? No one, because this chapter was, was very, very sad. P poor Odin. So yeah, uh, unless we count Orochi and Kaido, they'll probably be singing when this chapter is over. But not even them, because they were not very happy with the whole thing. So let us begin chapter 971, Sentenced to Boil. Um, badges, oh my family, volume 20. <laughs> beans with rice. Honestly, beans with rice. This cover... So far, so yeah. We do learn that Goat is a pretty fast runner. He's making wind wherever he passes, hairs flow, hats go off, dresses come up, uh, and to some very hairy legs. I guess this could be an Okama. So, anyway, let us go to the meat of the chapter. We start in Odin's castle. And this is fun because. I think I said this last chapter two weeks ago that I found it weird that uh, Toki, Hiyori and Momonosuke didn't yet knew uh, of Odin's predicament, even in, even in the end. But then I kind of realized, okay, the fight just ended and they're not going to get executed right away, so there's still time for them to know, and of course they will have to know. Uh, so we see that this chapter, a few, the, the, the few days before the, the execution have passed, and now Momonosuke and Yori even have to have their food checked just to be safe, because we don't know if Orochi or Kaido would do that type of thing now, would they? Mm, no, we, we don't know. Uh, Toki mentions that... It's because of Odin being a great man and that the weight of Wano will one day fall on Momonosuke's shoulders. We're seeing that right now. Uh, or, or rather, we were seeing that before the beginning of this very long flashback. And yeah, Momonosuke realized... I mean, he doesn't realize. He, he reminds himself that today's the day his father will be executed. And contrary to the whole samurai way... He starts to dribble a little bit and Hiori is kind of like... I don't know if Hiori isn't still aware of the situ of the full situation. Um, I don't know, maybe they chose to not tell her everything. I would understand that. Hiori is six years old. Like, <coughs> I don't know how they would address this, but maybe they decided, okay, let's not tell her everything, just... Let's let's keep her that way for a while. And Momonosuke knowing he can't really hold himself. Um, but yeah, we go to the big scene and my god, talk about overkill. Like, just a pot this big for just 10 people? Like, I know they're big guys and, and all, but I mean, come on. Just for an execution that's supposed to last like seconds? And as we see by the guy who falls in. It's, that scene is really funny. Um, as we see for the guy that falls in, like, it's overkill, but then again, it, it's, it's to cause impact. Uh, the public execution begins, people are rushing to see, people keep complaining about Odin, not really knowing what he has done. I was thinking about something just before recording this, actually. You know what would be very, very cool? Like, I know that the people are not exactly on Orochi's side or Kaido's side. 
But they still think that Odin abandoned them and that he didn't do anything to try and save them or that, that he wasn't strong enough to save them. I would love, and I know this is a bit of a stretch, but I would know for there to be a way to, to show the memory of that day on like a massive scale. Like, I thought of something like Pudding's Fruit, for instance, but instead of being the film, like applying a vision to everyone. And I thought that the one who could do that would be the Toki Toki no Mi. But for that, we would need a Toki Toki no Mi in the present, in the present storyline, which I don't think it will happen because as we all know, we are all fans of of science fiction and fantasy and and all that jeez we know that when time whenever time travel is introduced a lot of questions are asked like it gives birth to more problems than solutions most of the times and it's very finicky and very hard to to pull off in my opinion I think that Oda pulled the Toki Toki no Mi rather well. Not perfectly, but then again, there are no perfects in, in the world. Not even for a, for a work of art such as One Piece. But yeah, there are no perfects in that sense. But I think that Oda handled the Toki Toki rather well. He left her in the past... We still don't... I mean, she has to be around the world somewhere. I just don't think that we'll see her again. It's like the Nagi Nagi no Mi, I think. Cor Corazon's Fruit was the Nagi Nagi no Mi, right? I, I, don't, I don't remember. But yeah, the, the, silence, the Silence Fruit. We saw that in a flashback, and that was it. That was okay. It was a fruit that worked for that purpose. Now... It doesn't really have a purpose. I mean, I really can't see anyone... I, unless it would be to have a fight against... Against Brook. Because, yeah, silencing Brook would mean that he would no longer be able to use his music-based abilities. So, in a sense, it would be funny for someone from the Blackbeard Pirates to get the Nagi Nagi no Mi. Uh, I could see her return, yeah. But yeah, no, the, the Toki Toki will not return, and that, this is not the topic of the video. Focus, Andre, focus. Okay, so, but yeah, it would be fun for, imagine the battle is over, people are in desperation, like, whole hell breaks loose, Kaido and Orochi start going wild on the people, and then they all start panicking, the scabbards appear, and they're like, but what can you do? You didn't even fought for us all those years ago, we depended on you and you failed us. And I don't know, maybe Hiori. Imagine if Hiori uh, inherited, inherited the, the Toki Toki no Mi. Imagine, Toki knew how the fruits uh, pass from uh, after a user dies. So imagine she had a fruit ready with her and she uh, spoke to Hiori or and Kawamatsu maybe. I don't know if Kawamatsu... Kaya Kalmas would be privy of that information. But imagine, she was like to Toki, Dear child, when I die, take this fruit, uh, be careful with it, heed it, um, this, is, this is mom's power, <clears throat> you'll be able to use it, train with it, and so when the moment comes, you can show everyone the truth. And imagine, she was, she was somehow able, and that's how, because... So far, okay, this is going to turn into a debate over the Toki Toki no Mi. But so far, we only know that the Toki Toki no Mi can take someone in the future. What if the memory storing is the way that the fruit allows to go back? You can't physically go back, but you can, re you can relieve, you can relive some events. And that was one of the events, but that would have that would have to mean 
that Hiyori would have to get those memories from someone because she doesn't have those memories from someone. But imagine if she could go to like Kawamatsu or Kinemon or or hell, even Kaido. Imagine if she could get to Kaido and take the memories and just show them to everyone. Like, kind of like, like pudding's fruit, but without the photo reel. Just, she touches, she chooses the memory she wants, and then she like, focuses really hard, and boom! Toki Toki Awaken Fruit Memory Theater, or something. I don't know, I just came up with that. But anyway, so, it would be really cool if that happened. I'm so sorry, you know how I am. Again, sorry, not sorry. I do like to go on this, <clears throat> on these tangents. Okay, so people keep discrediting Odin, which is really sad, and that will play out later. And it's really cool to see. But Odin asks for a chance. Again, he claims it is imperative that I survive. So, what is this imperative? Like, he makes it sound like there's. A bigger role for him and we we kind of believe there is because of the whole I need to open one of those borders and everything but god damn I want to know what it is um, and the guy tries to put him in and he fells himself in and we see the real danger of the boiling pot the guy gets completely annihilated <coughs> the guy gets completely annihilated like, he, he pulls a rook. <laughs> he, he turns into nearly a skeleton. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, so yeah. Odin proposes a deal. And honestly, with this record, with his record and Kaido's, Odin is a real trustworthy guy. <laughs> so... He basically goes like and says, okay, we're going to the pot together and if any of us survive for the time that you stipulate, that said person goes free. Little did we know that Kaido would actually go on with this. Like he says, you have, a, we, you have one hour, which is really, really a lot if we think about it. It's really, really a lot. And, uh, so yeah, Odin just goes in and I just hate the townspeople. There's a guy that goes like and thinks, can you make it quick? I've got herons to run. Well, then go along, you dingus. This is a man that's going on here, not your run-of-the-mill thug. Odin is a man. More than you'll ever be, you son of a gun. Okay, so Odin goes in and he immediately starts screaming in agony. Like, and the scabbers are like, let's go, let's go, we gotta, we can't leave our lord alone. But then he goes and pulls out a big ass plank and he holds them in. All by himself. Like, <coughs> it's like, it's very Greek mythology. I, I think it's is it is it, it's Atlas, right? Atlas the I'm sorry, I'm a little rusty on my on my Greek mythology. I have to play God of War to, to get a refresher on that. <laughs> but I think it's Atlas. Yeah, Atlas the, the Titan who holds the world on his back. I, I just thought of that right now. But yeah, this scene is very, very cool. I just wish Manga Plus could do the double pages better because this page is Best appreciated in the double page. You just see Odin with all of them on his back. In a boiling pot. Like. Ah. Uh, like, honestly. I, I, I know I did a video on the whole One Note Trader thing. And I actually had a very cool comment. Um, explaining why Kanjuro would be the... Would be the traitor. But, I mean, I just cannot... Seeing this scene and seeing the, all their reactions, I just... It already pains me knowing that one of them has to be the traitor. But they're all here just 
Meh. Just doing nothing. Just... I mean, they're... They're just... Ah... I mean... It really pains me to know... I, I mean, I imagine that it pains a lot of us. Seeing that... Seeing that... Um, that one of them has to be... The traitor. And they're just letting him... It was user 109. I came to check who he was. He had a very cool explanation. If you're out there, thank you so much. I answered yesterday, but I took me a little while. I'm sorry. So if you're watching this, you have my thanks. So yeah, he had a very detailed explanation about why Kanjuru is the most likely choice. And I mean... I look at this and I think, how can one of them be the traitor? Like, we have that that possible Denjiro possibility as well, that possible Denjiro possibility. Wow. English, Andre, English. I mean, I just... Uh, it pains me, really. They all start going, no, please, this is not the way it is supposed to be. And he's like, shut up, this is an order. And... Ah, this, this is the man. This is a worthy man. Ah, he's worthy of the title of man. Like, with a big M. And not just man and not woman. Man as in, as in human. Ah, bloody gender things. <coughs> okay. Orochi and Kaido just laugh it off. And it goes on and on. I mean, it doesn't go for that long. Like, apparently... This is the part of the chapter that I got a little bit confused. I understand the first minute passing. Okay, it's to show that... I'm imagining this in the anime will be very stretched out. As to give the passage of time. But then the problem is, we see some TikToking. And we keep seeing the boiling pot. Then we see the Oniwaban shoe. Then we go to the scabbards, like, Raizo is complaining, which is very stupid. I wish I could slap him in the face. Neko starts getting angry with him and threatening the whole balance of things. Then Jiro cuts them off. Like, things are getting tense. Odin's bleeding on his arms, on his feet. He's, he's having a hard time breathing. And then, just four minutes passed. I mean... Just four minutes? I mean, this this is gonna take a long while because we see no more passage of time this chapter. The the next the rest of the chapter is for me the I mean not the most impressive. The most impressive is Odin carrying his vassals, his retainers, on his shoulders. But it's Shinobu. We finally get the explanation we needed about Odin. And it is very, very disturbing. So, basically, Orochi is a piece of... I don't even know what word I can use. Does, does YouTube uh, censor things? Like, if I say shit, will YouTube censor me? I mean, I don't know. Probably they will. They like to do that, but probably not. Okay, so yeah, Orochi is a, Orochi is a piece of shit. Basically. So, we finally understand what he said to Odin. So, what he said to Odin is, I prepare some human sacrifices for Kaido. So, if you dance crazy willy-nilly on the streets every day, I release a hundred people per day. Thing is, he never intended to do that. And the other lie they told him is that if he could pull that up uh, for five years then they would abandon the country. And that's where the, ah, but what of the ships thing come in? Because they told him, ah, we're just waiting on building some ships. And when those ships are built, we're, we're, we'll go out of your merry way and you can have your country back. So yeah, that's why a few chapters ago, before the whole shebang went down, I would ask, oh, okay, my lord, but what of the ships? And they were like, what? What, what, what ships? Now we understand. So, 
basically, that's why I said on the beginning of the chapter that with this kind of record, Odin couldn't really count, shouldn't really count on Kaido to keep his word for anything. So, okay, sure, he says anyone who can withstand it will survive. So, unless he doesn't hold on for the the time, the one hour time period, which I think you will, which I think you will, um, Kaido and Orochi still will, will not abide by their promise. Because we have the whole shebang with Odin's castle and the retainers being persecuted. And so, yeah. <clears throat> so Shinobu explains the whole thing. And while Kaido and Orochi keep laughing in the background. And people are like, I don't know if people believe it or not. But at this point it doesn't matter. Like, only four minutes have gone by. Five at tops with this old Shinobu thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect of the next chapter. Luckily, there's no break. We just came out of the break. So, next to... Uh... Oh! Okay, the chapter will release on Friday. I didn't realize that. Yeah, February 21... February 21 is uh, is a Friday. Fine by me. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Well, slight problem whatsoever, but uh yeah, maybe maybe I can turn it around. Maybe I can start turning it around. If it starts eating on Friday every every week, maybe I can start bringing it up to to Friday instead of waiting the whole weekend. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think if you if you would prefer me to to pull it up to to Friday if the weekly release gets changed to to Friday which I don't which I don't think it's going to be for that long. I don't know if in Japan they celebrate car, uh, carnival. So um, here in Portugal is all the rage as as you can imagine. Not not as much as in for like Brazil or something but but yeah, we have our fair share. We have our fair share of of festivities for for carnival. I'm not really one much into it, but then again, I'm not the most festive type of guy. Um, but yeah, this was fun to notice because next Friday we'll have a chapter. So, <sighs> Odin, man, Jesus Christ, this man. <clears throat> I I want a figure of this guy already. I just, I just need one. Like, stop making Nami with melons the size of her head, or twice the size of her head, and make a figurine of of Odin. Like, make a portrait of pirates. I'll buy a portrait of pirates or of Odin. Like, I'll do it. Those are. Exp- Pensive as all hell, but I'll do it. I'll buy a portrait of Pirates of, of Odin. <clears throat> oh, man. Jesus. I don't even... When I read this chapter... I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come clean to you guys. I read this chapter on Friday. Like, I promised myself this year that I would, that I would stop reading spoilers. I did that. I no longer read the spoilers. I wait. The problem is I started reading fan translations again. And I read the first time I read this chapter was in French. <laughs> if if you it it was really cool because I'm learning French and I was I thought, well, if I can, let's let's do it. Let's it, it it's good practice. And it's I actually read it pretty 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 well. I'm I'm surprised at myself. I understood everything. So <clears throat> When I first read this, it was like, man, this guy, this Odin, like, he knows he has something to do, that he's willing to put this... This is what he's doing. He's turning to his to the scabbards and saying, I'm doing this for you. Like, you live. And you protect this country. And I am protecting you. So... He's not expecting to come out of this alive. Or if he is, he has some big balls, man. 
But like I said, even if he does survive the whole hour, <clears throat> they will not let him go. Like, I'm imagining either Orochi or Kaido will, will just pull up and... Yeah, I don't care. See? Like, imagine... The, the one hour time period goes on and it ends. And then Odin is completely battered. His retainers are there on his side. But they are not around him. They are like in front of him. And then all of a sudden Odin is in the ground. Bleeding profusely. Panting. Trying to catch his breath. And then like... Either... A sword gets through him or cuts off his head. And then we see Orochi in the back. And with a bubble saying something like... And the chapter ends with something like... We see Orochi's shadow. We see... That's why I think it should be true. Because then... Then uh, Odin could say something like... Something like looking at him. You promised and the orochi is like kaido promised i didn't promise anything and then and the scabbers are all mortified and odin falls to the ground dead thank god i'm not the one who writes one piece jesus christ but yeah i mean it would be very impactful <clears throat> Not that this flashback lacks any impactful moments, though, but, uh... Well, some more cannot hurt. My problem is, how will Oda trump this in the future? Like, he's writing himself into a corner with Odin. Like, at this point, we could have a full manga on Odin. Like, from his early years to this moment. I would gladly see this moment again. Like, we could have a spin-off of entitled Odin Peace. And that's it. We don't need any more. We don't even need to get to Laugh Tale. We'll, we'll, with Luffy, we'll get there with Odin. It's okay, Odin. Stop One Piece and start Odin Peace. No, please don't. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Um, I think my 30-minute mark has gone off. The rails completely. But it's okay. Uh, One Piece deserves it, so... I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. This was a pretty straightforward chapter. There was a lot of development in, in sequence. So we got answers to what exactly was the deal between Orochi and, and Odin. What exactly was the... Um, was the deal with the ships question. And it's just pretty much despicable. Like, Orochi just decided, oh, I'm gonna get revenge on the whole country. Because the whole country got revenge on me. <laughs> or in my family. So I'm just gonna kill them all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Perona's laugh, not Orochi. Orochi doesn't have a laugh, I think. <clears throat> Does he have a laugh? Okay, no. <laughs> anyway, stop going on tangents. Or else, or else, yeah. Or else we'll never get out of here. So, I hope you have enjoyed. I hope I didn't go out of camera uh, a lot. Because, as I said, different scenario, different computer, different setup. Not that my setups are that professional, but, <laughs> you know, a guy must have standards. I mean, come on. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed it. Please comment in the section, uh, in the comment section. Of the... <laughs> please comment in, I uh, please comment in the comment section down below what you think of this chapter. Are you enjoying this flashback? I find it hard to believe that someone is not enjoying this, this flashback. But if you're not, please do let me know and do, do let me know why. Do you think it's being dragged out or not or being shortened? Even some people would argue that I would argue that some parts were shortened, but please do let me know your opinion about this chapter and about the current state of affairs in the One Piece world. I'll see you guys next week or even in this week, if we're lucky, uh, with chapter 972. 
So, bye-bye.